Fantastic. All right. Um, so congratulations to our wonderful cast and crew. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's a really fun time. Um, so we have a few questions for you guys. I think first up, and we have this microphone to pass around. Um, first up, what are you most excited about for people to take from your film? So a little background about this movie. Um, I got cast to become a female professional wrestler in Hollywood, and I trained with them in the gym, and, um, and then all of a sudden I got sick, and they didn't take me with to Vegas, and I was kind of bummed, so I wrote the script. And um, before I wrote the script, I was like, dude, I wish like, the bus gets stuck in the middle of, the, of nowhere, and they end up all in a ghost town. And I was just still processing that they, they just abandoned me after training with them. And um, so within 30 days, I wrote the script. And Ursel came out here from Germany to help me make it happen. So the first half is inspired by true events. The second half is my blooming imagination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that uh, we want to really thank Carolyn and Ursula for uh, making this happen. They had a dream, and they made it happen. And no matter how many things got in their way, no matter how many things said no, no matter whatever, they kept doing it, and they kept fighting, they kept kicking, kept screaming. And uh, even if things stop, you keep going, and uh, congratulations on, there's so many people that have a thought or have a whatever, but to actually get it done, make it, and create it, and make it, it's really an achievement, and congratulations. So. The most exhausting thing was, um, we had had, have had a lot of obstacles in our way, like getting permits, and getting not permits, and getting people, and getting not people. It was like on and off, and um, it was not nice. Sometimes it was not nice. Sometimes it was really nice. So uh, it was like balanced. So, um, and for me, the most really exciting moment was uh, the ghost town because I'm really not used to animals which could poison. And when Dan came and made the brief uh, things, like brief, what is it called in English? Brief, the brief, the briefing. Like there are snakes which don't rattle, rattle snakes which don't rattle are really poisonous. So please um, be aware of that. And it's like what? I was like panicking inside. It was, it, it was like insane. I can't do that. And I was, you know, I, I, inside I was like really running away, like panicking totally. And I was like, it was smiling. <laughs> it was just smiling. It was just like getting those stick. You remember my snake stick? My snake stick. <laughs> it was like weaponed with a stick the whole three days. And nobody could get that stick. So this was, for me, the biggest thing. That was some lost uh, after like there was some lost sound effects that I wasn't seeking for at the editing room. <laughs> I mean, I say dick and bitch a lot. It's very far from who I am as a real person. So it was a very tough audition, but I did it. So thank you. Um, so for cast, what were some of the ways that you prepared to be female wrestlers and prepared to be in this film? What was important to you to get across? To not die. Great. In <laughs> real life. <laughs> or break anything. And to laugh a lot. I didn't wrestle. Wait a second, we all saw the movie. There was, you could call it wrestling. Mild right, wrestling. Right. Yeah, that was some wrestling, all right. Hey, you know, I just want to say while I have the mic, um, and we'll get back to the girls, but um, no, seriously, I just thought of this when uh, watching the ending. I realized that there could be a sequel with my and her child, because she lives on. 
right? So, because it seems like you two live on, and she might have gotten pregnant from that encounter that we had. So wouldn't you guys love to see like a sequel of that with like her and and <laughs> and Carol's characters like continuing? I don't know. I was just thinking of that. Okay, so what were some of your challenges uh, wrestling? Um, I just want to say that what drew me to the script was that it was so true in a way. I mean, not the deaths or anything, but the underlying theme that it's so true to like the underlog, underdog facing its challenges. And that's what this character does. She fights through being turned down and not making it on the team and fighting for something. And I think that's what this film can relate to the world. Because you gotta keep going even though you're, you're going through challenges. And I think that's the most important message in this film is that even though you're an underdog, you keep trying, you keep going until you get to where you wanna be. And so that's the main thing that drew me to the script. And such a great director and Ursula that came from Germany facing those challenges. And they've come to the United States to do a beautiful film. And even though we had problems with the sound today, I know that once it's fixed and hopefully we can get, out of, get it out to the world, it'll be a beautiful message. So. I didn't wrestle. I just stole Andy's cat, but I think I should be in the sequel too, because I certainly have a reason to murder after how I was treated. Yeah, I have no problem. Yeah, I could raise the baby. I'd make an excellent mother. I have a cat. I, I, I wrestled, um, I trained about 18 hours a day for about nine months. And, uh, uh, well, there you go. Uh, I, I lived my life as a stunt woman, and then she started copying me. But I guess uh, <laughs> here you go. Uh, she has helped with so many things on this film, and the great thing about everyone in this cast is um, everything kept going sideways <laughs> every day. But uh, we kept trying to do the best we could with what we had, and she brought in so many amazing gifts of people and sets, and um, she had such a, had such great energy, and um, and everyone together, all the girls you know, played together and um, rooted for each other. And, and it was really, really a, a, kind of a grace-filled project where, <laughs> like, the ghost town arrives the day before <laughs> we shoot it. It just, so many things about it was amazing. And she was such an integral part, and even though she did so many wrong things, but uh, so many rights <laughs> as well. Thank you. Um, actually, well, to go back to you, what actually drew me to the script, the, the project, was I was there when everyone told Carolyn she couldn't do it. And I'm actually a professional fighter. <laughs> My Sifu is here. Um, and I was trained by Jean LaBelle for four years in grappling, which is wrestling. And I have, I don't like when people say you can't do something. You don't know anyone's limitations. We also don't know our own limitations. So to tell people that they can't do something is, sorry, bullshit. And I looked at her and I said, don't listen to them do what you want to do, and fuck them. And, if you, and then she asked me, would you do this? And I'm like, fuck yeah, why not? They can kiss our ass. <laughs> I'm so, sorry for the crassness, that's me. <laughs> but um, that's how I got involved, and she, I'm blown away. She did and does what she says she's going to do. Um, her and Ursul, and by the way, Ursul's an amazing cook. All I have to say is, Seriously, I'm okay as long as Ursula's cooking. It's awesome. Like, you know what? There could be rattlesnakes, whatever. But there's Ursula's cooking. So that's what it boils down to. Um, there were challenges, but everyone was really incredible, and everybody pulled together. And like I said, these two, it was funny because they would tell me things, or call me the night before, and they would just show up cool as cucumbers, like none of that happened. And I'm sitting going, you know what? That's awesome. And oh, wait, I do have to point out. Okay, so they called me the night before to tell me they changed the script, that I was now killing everybody, because I was only killing like, a couple people. And they didn't want me to tell anybody. So we did the table read, and everybody's friendly, da da da. At the end of that table read, everybody scooted away from me. <laughs> and it was quiet, because I killed everybody. <laughs> but, anyways, these two are amazing, so thank you. 
Um, I just want to add on um, regarding the ending. Um, the first half is like an hour, and then the second half is like 20 minutes, and yeah, I want everyone, everybody just get killed. Um, the reason was like we had a first ending, but because of budget and uh, script-wise um, financing, we couldn't really um, go a true way, like uh, based on the script, the real ending. So we had to change the ending at the uh, second day of shooting in the ghost town, and just like come up like real right now. Uh, with a really fast, compelling, fast, cool ending and get them all killed. Um, so within like the ah. <laughs> last two days, we just like put up like a new ending, which was not actually in the script. And um, so when I add a note also onto the, um, the locations, it was so challenging to film a film, uh, to make a film, a feature film in Hollywood for $1,000 because everything is so expensive, locations, food, and, and um, yeah, like, you know, crew, nobody wanted to do it. And, um, and we got it all together and we just always believe. And like my motto is like, never, never give up. And if you believe and put it out there, things will come back. And if you stand in faith and walk in faith and not in sight, you will get the things. And that just totally happened because um, we wanted usually to shoot at Calico Ghost Town, but they wanted like a thousand dollars per day, and we couldn't afford that because the whole budget is like a thousand dollars. So, a night before, we were looking for a ghost town. So I call up um, Crystal, and Crystal told me like, "Hey, stay cool," because we thought we wouldn't be able to finish the film. And she called all her connections, and she sent us then the results. And we look at the results, and we went in there. And then there was one result that in Kern County, there's a, not a ghost town, but a tropical goat mine, like a like a abandoned goat mine. And um, gold mine. <laughs> and um, we didn't have any contact number. We didn't know how to get there. And everybody was like, hey, I have to work. Are we shooting, yes or no? We're like, yes, we're shooting. Just. Like, just keep your feet still. We are going to shoot. We are going to finish this film, no matter what. And a night before, I had this dream about somebody's giving me the key to this gate, and there was a ghost town behind it, and I just opened the gates with the key, and we'll finish the film. So the day of shooting the, um, the ghost town, we had to um, get the equipment, the generators, lighting, and we just did everything in faith. And we went up to Rosemont. We didn't even know the address where it was. We just like punched in the GPS, like Rosemont. We went to the first gas station, asked them about this ghost town. They gave us directions. We came there, and it was a gate with this tropical gold mine in there. So we saw this little boy playing around, and we're like, hey, do you know who belongs to this ghost town? And he's like, yeah, that's my neighbor. He just lives down the street. And we're like, hey, can you get his number? Yes, of course. His name is Daniel, and he, um, he, he lives there, and he drives a blue pickup truck. So green, blue, whatever. So what happened was um, um, he came down. We told him, hey, we're doing a feature film for $1,000, and um, if we can used this ghost town for shooting, and that was our last hope. And um, this guy, he said, yes, sure, no problem, but it's um, $1,000 per day. We're like, oh, we can't afford that. And then we're like, hey, we just need night shoots, like three nights. Um, and he's like, okay, no problem. And then we negotiate the budget, and it was working for us. And then we're like, hey, we need to shoot it now in three hours. Is it okay? And he's like, yes, I'll be here. The gates will be open come with your crew and cast, you can have this location. So that was our faith thing. It was just really insane. Um, yeah. Office. office. And then Crystal got us also the gym. We didn't have the office. And all of a sudden, the office came um, because an actor was like, hey, you need an office? I stay in this building. And they have like a, a room where it looks like an office. You can shoot there. No problem. Just come in and shoot. So we got the office and the bus. That was also, oh, that was a big headache too. But we call so many bus companies and they charge like $2,000 or twenty five for just like nine hours just to rent a bus. And, and we were looking and looking, we had the OPA looking and we were both doing like seven jobs. Like, like we did production, like directing, producing, call sheets. 
we had to, we didn't have money for catering. We also like cook for everybody and make sandwiches. And it was just like, and then we had to think about gluten-free people. <laughs> right? And it was just like, oh my gosh. And I was like, I don't care. I just want to feed them. If they're gluten-free, they should just eat it, whatever. Um, but yeah, we, we made it happen. Like Bathrooms, we had to fire people. <laughs> yeah, we're like, okay, you know, we, you, you don't cooperate. You, you talk negative about us. Like, thank you, but bye. We, this is not going to work for us. All right, I'd like to open up the questions for some audience members. If anyone has a question for the cast and crew. No, Find some. I, did, I would have done that, <laughs> honestly, because I was like, hmm, can, do, can we eat that? Because uh, why not? <laughs> it would be good, wouldn't it? All right, yes. Sure, absolutely. I love to. Thanks for asking. Um, so I went to Las Vegas, and um, I won a drone. <laughs> um, just like that, um, they just scanned my batch, and all of a the sudden they called my name. I won a drone and a GoPro, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And I think I was the first girl who ever like flew a drone. <laughs> and um, so I just practiced it, and I just got really good with it. And there's, I did like a lot of aerial shots by myself, so I just took my drone all over the place and flew it. And then um, I needed to get pickup shots for um, some pickup shots at the ghost town, some aerial shots. And then my drone just flew away and I never saw it back. And then it was like three days looking in the desert for this little thing. And at the end, a cop found it because I was just relentless because it was so expensive. And then I, I, I was witnessing my baby, I need it back. And um, so he brought it back to me and it still works. So yeah. Uh, Caroline found me on IMDb or Facebook and said, come read this. I sent it to your agent and they didn't answer, which is so not normal for LA. And so I came and then she booked me that day and then we started shooting like seven days later. So I showed up on set and everyone kind of knew each other already and I was the outsider looking in. But I told jokes and everyone loved me, right? Probably not. <laughs> I, I stick to the strip the entire time. I, um... And he's the worst. He was improv the entire time. Yes, you were. And then he would talk over our lines. I think you asked that at one point, is there a script? <laughs> <laughs> No, we did the scene, we shoot at least once, and then it's like, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, add, you know, make your own. And the entire thing that we did was our idea, all right? Like, we had that idea together. Otherwise, we'd just been sitting there like this the whole time, right? So, don't even. No, no, Andy was like, I was like, Andy, you're not following the script. And he's like, sorry, 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 sorry. We're just going to, we're just going to do a little bit. We're just going to do a little bit of this. It's going to be great, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. I was sitting there, and then you grabbed me, and you said, I'm going to do this. And I said, please leave me alone, sir. And then you did. And I was like, all right, sir, stop. And please. And that's how it went. You know. Yeah, I just want to say that I just figured when he stopped talking, it's my turn to actually follow the script. <laughs> how was that? <laughs> um, I wrote the script. And um, when we auditioned um, Andrew, we saw him actually in the studio, and we were like, oh my gosh, who is he? I want him. Like, is he available? Like, you know, we want to hire him. He would be the perfect Andrew. And then um, Ursula was like, this is a young Marlon Brando. We have to get this guy. And then we got him in, and he just come in. He read for us. Okay, I'm out. He make everybody cry, and then he was just out of the door. We're like, oh, wait a minute. What's your name? Where are you from? Oh, what's your phone number? Uh, how can we reach you? Are you available this and this date? And he was like, sorry, I have to go to work. Bye. And he was gone. <laughs> um, but when we say we like him, we want to cast him, he was all down for it, really excited. And we were excited that he says yes to the script. And then he had so much character to Richard, and the way how he acted and played it was so much better that I could have ever wrote it. 
So when he started improving and getting into the role, I was like, as a director, I was like, I don't want to stop this creativity. It's flowing out of him. And even this, 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 um, this quote, I just want to crush your face. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't even write it better. Or I want my cat back. Come on. Like, in whose mind can birth such ideas? So we're really happy and really proud of Andrew um, that he just brings so much personality and character towards his character. Thank you. And you make everything flow. Also, um, word for Crystal, she amazing woman, power girl, <laughs> super woman here. Um, like when we cast her, she was like, yeah, you know, my, my brother's a musician. I can get you this, I can help you there. And she was always like slow to think, but fast to act and fast to help. And we were so, <laughs> we were so blessed to have her on set. <laughs> Plus, she's a professional stunt woman, and you know, she brought Melissa Stubson, who plays Darlene, and we just love her as well. And we're like, dude, those those two are the best team together to play Lisa and um, Darlene. Um, yeah, so thank you. And you know, she was like, I have a friend at the gym, no problem. I fight there all the time. You can just get it, like because I say you can get it. So thank you. And I will point out that I only love men. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. I have to say that. <laughs> well, how did you guys end up coordinating your stunts? It seems like a big part of your film. Um, who helped co create those stunts and who participated in choreographing those things for you? Well, she did and she did and then uh, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, she and, and then she Melissa. did. Yeah. Melissa and she. Yeah, Melissa and she. Melissa and she. Well, fantastic. Yeah. And it goes down. And then on the ring, um, I coordinate some of the wrestling stuff. We did it together. All right, great. Any other questions from the audience? Well, we had this deadline to submit it to Sundance in 2013. So we had a really crunch time just because Urza was here uh, just for two months. So the whole, like, the whole month of May 2013, I wrote the script in 30 days. Um, July 2013, the whole month was just pre-production. We just hire people, June. And then starting July 13, we had two weeks of shooting. Um, and then after shooting, I edit this whole movie within one and a half months. So total four months from start to finish. Wow. I was really rushed. And this is the third edit. Like the first edit, we just really rushed to get it into Sundance. It didn't get in. Um, and I just edited it towards the script. And Max, our DP, who unfortunately is working today, um, he did a great job. We, because we were in such, such a type crunch time and budget, we just get one shot, one shot, one shot, close up, close up, and white. And I didn't have like tons of footage to, to, to work with, but I got the, the essential footage that I need to make the story work. So he was very efficient, and I was really grateful for that. Um, sound was really problematic, because I was sound, um, was like back and forth, um, and then, we lost him for like three days and then he was back. He broke his leg at 4th of July. <laughs> yeah. But like, and then uh, at the gym, like, we, we always said, because um, it was such a tight budget, we couldn't afford to hire people a whole week because they had other jobs. So we were really grateful if somebody would just come in as a PA and just work like a whole day for us for free. And then we can say like, hey, can you stay here a whole week? Because they have like daytime jobs as well. But we did make it work and then they always rotate and make this work because it was just a great project. <laughs> You know, I, that, that artistry, well, I got it right once because we only had one doll, I was informed. So yeah, it was a little pressure. <laughs> Didn't, wasn't sure it was gonna come out anatomically correct. No promises, but hey, it worked. <laughs> I was nervous. Um, so in moving forward, what are you guys hoping that comes next? What are you reaching for? 
Well, the film is now done, and as you have seen in the preview, we, we started a Kickstarter campaign for 30 days to raise uh, $50,000 to um, get this out as distribution, for distribution. We got a lot of offers from Hollywood, but they were like sucky offers, which we thought we don't really want to <laughs> get bound into that. Um, so I don't want to give my film away for basically nothing. And what they do is like they will just uh, bind you for the next 15 years um, and then just put it out on DVD and you never see a penny in the back end. And it was hard work. I mean, it it costs us like, like 5,000, but it has a value of 5 million if we have to shoot it for real with like hire all the people and and um, location, pay all the location. We're, we're just really lucky that we have a great God who just make everything happen and give us like favor and everything what we do. So we were really, really fortunate in everything what we do. So right now we are looking for distribution. That means we wanna get this film out and um, preferably with a distributor who is, who is um, legit and who um, you know, knows what he's doing and you know, can sell it and market it and bring it out to the people and not just VOD but also tragical release and stuff like that. So that's what we're wishing for because there's already another script um, lining up for 2016. It's already done and that's a new project. Fantastic. Uh, any other questions from the audience? All right, great. Congratulations to all of you.